the planning act. Please keep in mind the intent of this process is to review the application that is before the committee, listen to the evidence, and then make a decision. This process is not intended to be used to resolve any concerns or disputes that may exist between the town, individuals, or organizations. If a request for a deferral is made and the committee grants such a request, the applicant or authorized agent must contact the secretary treasurer to schedule a new hearing date. In order to conduct an effective and efficient electronic hearing, we have adopted the following process. If you are watching the live stream of this hearing on oakville.ca and you wish to speak to an item on the agenda, please call 905-815-6095. Again, the number is 905-815-6095. The number will also be posted below the live stream page at oakville.ca. Staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions to join the video conference. You will be asked to, share, to provide your name and number of item that you wish to address, as well as your address and telephone number. When the chair of the committee polls for interested parties, you will have to press star six to unmute yourself. The applicant agent will also be given the opportunity to briefly explain to the committee the basis of the application and answer any questions that may arise. A maximum of five minutes will be provided for each presentation. You will need to state your full name and address for the record and any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of the committee. All delegations must also state their full name and address for the record and a maximum of five minutes will, so be, will be provided for each presentation. All remarks and questions are, be, are to be directed to the chair and any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of the committee. The applicant or agent will then be provided with a further five minutes to respond to comments made by interested parties, answer any questions, that may arise from the committee members. And if the applicant or agent has any concerns found in staff report, particularly with proposed conditions, this will be the opportunity to advise us. The matter will then be taken into committee for a decision, and this will mark the end of all discussion. Any person desiring a notice of the decision will have to provide a written request, preferably through email to the secretary treasurer. Written notice of the committee's decision will be mailed no later than 10 days for minor variances and 15 days for consent applications to the applicant agent and any other person who has filed a written request for such notice. The last day of appeal to the decision to the Ontario Land Tribunal will be noted on the decision. Only the applicant, specified persons or public bodies may appeal the committee's decision to the Ontario Land Tribunal. In November of 2022, Bill 23 legislation, the More Homes Built Faster Act, amended the Planning Act to remove appeal rights for members of the public. If no appeal is received within the prescribed time frame, the decision of the committee becomes final and binding, and the secretary treasurer will then notify the applicant and anyone who has received a copy of the decision through written correspondence. People participating in this hearing are to be courteous to and respectful of the members of the committee, town staff, and any other member of the public who has participated in the electronic hearing. Tonight's electronic hearing is being video recorded and available for future viewing at oakville.ca. Thank you. We have no regrets this evening. Do I have any declarations of pecuniary interests? I see none, thank you. At this time, I'll be taking uh, requests for a deferral. Madam Secretary Treasurer, please uh, ask anyone who has raised their hand uh, to address the committee. Ms. Starr, I see your hand up. Uh, you'll have to press star six to unmute yourself. And if you do have video conferencing, please turn your camera on. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Hello. Yes. Um, committee and chair, um, my name is um, Michelle Starr of Deanley Management, and I am here on behalf of the owner, Mr. Uh, Chud Liu, um, at the 398 um, Kelsian Drive and the application number is A-063-2000. Very well. 
Agreed. I have um, you, yes. We are, we're actually asking um, committee to defer our application because we reviewed the planning comments the other day. I did speak to a zoning examiner and they've had suggested that I defer the application to have further discussion for them. So we're gonna be um, dealing with the additional variance that was actually identified by planning for the front yard setback. So we'd like an opportunity to um, speak to planning further and then add that to our application. Very well. Um, members, uh, all those in support of a deferral? Okay, the application has been deferred. You'll see the secretary treasurer at your earliest convenience. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Good evening. Uh, any other deferrals, Madam Secretary Treasurer? Um, Mr. John Perkins, uh, he's going to request the deferral of the Avon Custom. Mr. Perks? Yes. Good evening. Good evening. I understand you're requesting a deferral. Is that to work with staff further regarding their comments? That's correct. And that's for 13 Avon Crescent uh, CAV A0662023. Very well. You'll see the secretary treasurer at your earliest convenience. Members, uh, all those in support of a deferral. Okay, the application has been deferred. Thank you, Mr. Perks. Thanks, committee. Anyone else, Madam Secretary Treasurer? I just promote. I just promote somebody um, wants to speak. Okay. Uh, good, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Greg Ewens uh, from Pistori Management. I'm here representing uh, the owners of 37 Rancliffe uh, uh, Road, and we are seeking deferral this evening uh, to okay. continue to work with staff based on on the comments that we recently received uh, regarding our application. Very well, thank you, Mr. Ewens. Uh, members, uh, all those in support of a deferral? Okay, the application has been deferred. Mr. Ewens, you'll see the secretary treasurer at your earliest convenience. Thank you kindly. Have a good evening. You as well. Madam Secretary Treasurer, if there's no one else who's raised their hand or in wait in waiting, uh, we can uh, take the first matter on our agenda. Um, I do have Mr. Matthew Falaho, and he raised his hands, um, but you can check with him if he wants to defer the application. Okay, very well. Good evening. You'll have to unmute yourself. Oh, hi. Um, I'm hi. not Matthew. Yes, but... obviously. <laughs> yeah. um, Matthew's my neighbor, um, and I know he wanted to speak today. Uh, I have a presentation that I've prepared. So, uh, before you go any further, which yeah. item on the agenda are you here for? 52 Chartwell Road. Okay, we haven't uh, called that matter into... Um, into committee yet. Um, I understand you're one of the members of the uh, neighbors? Yes. Okay, so you'll have a chance to speak when I do ask for interested parties that, are, uh, that would like to address the committee, but first we'd like to hear from the applicant and see their uh, application and their presentation, and then you'll have a chance to speak. Okay, thank you. Sorry, so I'm very brand just, new to all of this. No, that's <laughs> okay. fine. Just hang tight. Keep yourself okay. muted, and um, we'll call you uh, shortly. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
All right, so uh, if no one else has raised their hand, Madam Secretary Treasurer, I'll call the first item on our agenda. There's no one else seeking deferrals or withdrawals of an application at this time. Uh, there is nobody, Madam Chair. Um, I'm promoting Mr. Paul Cronis for the first item on the application. Okay, very well, thank you. So the um, first item on our agenda is a consent application at uh, 52 Chartwell Road. This is application B23-031711. Again, it's at 52 Chartwell Road. Good evening, Mr. Cronus. Uh, good evening, <clears throat> Madam Chair and members of the committee. It's my pleasure to be here tonight uh, with you to speak to the application you just referenced at 52 Chartwell Road. Uh, I will be making a presentation. Uh, I anticipate it. Uh, as you know, there's a few letters of opposition and you just heard from uh, one of the neighbors. Uh, just to uh, streamline my discussion and keep within the five minutes, I prepared this uh, PowerPoint presentation. Um, if we can go to this, uh, again, my name's Paul Cronus. I'm a land use planner in the office of Weir Falls. I'm here on behalf of Mr. Giardino, the owner of 52 Chartwell Road. Um, as, you, uh, uh, as you appreciate during the intake process, um, I filed a very uh, detailed <clears throat> justification letter in support of the application. You also have before you a very thorough, and I uh, commend to you the report by planning staff that covers all the bases similar to what I have covered. So I will not try to repeat anything. I will try to use my five times uh, judicially and summarize all the information as quick, quickly as possible. So if we go to slide number two, uh, the property is at the uh, northwest, at the intersection of the northwest corner of um, of uh, Chartwell Road and uh, C um, Carson Lane. It's about 200 uh, meters south of Lakeshore Road East. Uh, the site measures about 25.58 meters along Chartwell Road and has a depth of about 44.06 meters and that uh, represents a lot area of 1137.6 square meters. Uh, uh, as you probably uh, have noticed, the house, the uh, property is currently occupied or improved with a uh, about a 22 year old uh, detached dwelling um so if we can go to slide number three in the next slide the uh, as as you uh, appreciate or uh, uh, saw in the application materials before you the application is uh, the purpose of the application is to create one new lot after the existing home is demolished the uh, the uh, severed lot you, is uh, shown there in cross hatching the retained lot is to the right uh, in uh, just simple hatching each lot will have a frontage of 22, or, uh, slightly over 22 meters, 22.04 meters, uh, a lot frontage and the depth of 25.79 square meters. And they're almost equivalent of about 568 square meter lot area. If we can go to the next slide. Um, what I tried to demonstrate in the next slide. Yeah, maybe we have a little, can the committee hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, uh, okay, there we go, slide number four. What I try to demonstrate in this slide, uh, just for illustrative purposes, is the, uh, the, uh, the footprint or the built form that can occur on this property of Severed. It demonstrates uh, that it could comply with the minimum uh, lot frontage uh, require or the uh, setback requirements, the rear setback and the side setback requirements. Uh, the intent is to demonstrate with this envelopes that a built form can meet all these zoning requirements and uh, it, that also includes, and you'll see in the next uh, slide, uh, it, it includes the uh, ability to meet the height, gross flow area, and floor space index. I summarized the uh, zoning requirements on the, uh, on the first column, followed by the retained and the severed lots. And as you can, uh, as you can see from this, uh, uh, they, the, the built form complies in all regards uh, with all the zoning requirements and standards. Um, uh, the and you'll see the property is zoned uh, RL3-0, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, if you can go to the next slide. Um, uh, here, what I've tried to demonstrate is what the builders will look like. This is just illustrative purposes. I just, you know, it's, it's hard to picture things two-dimensionally. I wanted to give it some depth. Uh, you can see the substantial front yard. Um, it's, a, uh, um, it, it's a built form that is quite common and, uh, in, in, in Oakville and it uh, provides for a house roughly at about 238 square meters. Um, uh, if we can go to slide six, seven and eight. 
uh, sorry, yes, the, uh, again, these just show at different angles uh, the uh, built form that would result from this. Um, if we can proceed to slides uh, 9, 10, and 11 uh, in slow motion. Uh, here I, I tried to put the, uh, the proposed uh, uh, built form that can fit within uh, the uh, building envelopes that will be created, uh, hopefully through the severance process. It shows you how the building would look or feel in the context of the neighborhood and uh, the character and the, and the setbacks and the streetscape can be maintained. Um, I've given you the angles from the north side of Carson. This is on the south side of Carson. And I also, a previous slide was on the uh, west side of Charlwell. Um, if we can go to slide number 12, I'd like to spend a little bit of time here. I, I, I've shown a red arrow. Uh, Madam Secretary, Treasurer, if I'm running out of time, can you please give me like a one minute warning so I can wind it down quickly? Thank you. Um, I show in the right arrow where the property is. Of what significance here is also what staff pointed out. The area that you see in polka dots, that's a special policy area. That's where the large lot characteristics occur. This property is not in that area, and that's an important distinction. Um, now, I've, I've given a very thorough analysis of the provincial policy statements, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the growth plan, uh, Oakville official plan and the region official plan and, and how it conforms and complies with all these standards. I don't intend to take you through everything, but I just wanted to summarize quickly that uh, in respect of the town livable Oakville, uh, the guiding principles uh, stated in 2.2.1, uh, preserving and enhancing the community uh, character of the neighborhood, I think we fully comply and staff uh, come to the same conclusion. Uh, in, in respect of where growth should be uh, concentrated, and this is in the growth centers, and this is uh, in the growth centers, and it conforms to section 4.3 of the official plan. Uh, in terms of the policy framework for assessing intensification in residential areas, um, I had a look in regard to and applied section 11.1.8 and 11.1.9, uh, which provides criteria for assessing development, including the creation of new lots within stable residential communities to ensure they maintain and protect the neighborhood character. Um, specifically, uh, subsection D, uh, proposed lotting pattern of development uh, shall be compatible with the predominant lotting pattern in the surrounding neighborhood. And finally, I had regard to the consent policies under section 28.14. My overall conclusion, which actually parallels that of uh, staff's independent finding, is that the proposed lots have uh, frontage on the public street and can adequately be serviced by the existing municipal water, wastewater, and sanitary services as their existing services within the municipal right-of-way. The seven retained lots comply with the applicable zoning bylaw uh, with respect to minimum lot frontage and lot area, providing the shape and size as appropriate for proposed development and compatible with the lots of surrounding neighborhood. Intensification of the lands would create lots that are in keeping with the surrounding lot fabric, maintains and protects the character of the existing neighborhood, and the consent policies are fully complied with. Um, and as I said, I had a, uh, a you know, the consent, uh, in my opinion, is desirable and appropriate and timely. Um, if we can go to slide 13, uh, as I said, this is the zoning on the, on the property LRL3-0, uh, the prefix, and the, and the prefix uh, zero provides for a minimum lot area of 18 um, uh, meters and, um, and um, a minimum lot frontage of 18 meters and the minimum lot size of 555.557.5. And lastly, uh, I just want to take you quickly through the other last two slides, last uh, slide 14. Um, I filed the full report, but this was a severance application that was approved uh, by uh, the town of Oakville in 2016 for the property uh, just two doors down, uh, known as 55 Howard Street. It's shown on this slide as subject lands. Within the context of that um, application, staff assessed, and you see the uh, passage that I extracted, assessed um, um, the potential for other severances in the area, and they identified three others. Uh, the one lot that they identified is a lot that I point in red, which is the subject property. So they conclude the intensification of the lands identified in figure three uh, could create lots that are consistent with the surrounding lot fabric and comply with the zoning bylaw and and that in that particular case uh, staff uh, found support and approved the 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 consent for that property and 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 as you can see it was contemplated at least they assessed what the uh, implication would be 
of allowing the severance of that property at 55 Howard. And they looked at the surrounding uh, character of the area and they identified only three lots, one of them, which is the subject property. And finally, I, I'd be remiss if not to uh, take you to uh, the test under section 51, uh, 24 of the Planning Act, that slide, uh, the next slide. Oh, sorry, before I get there, what I plotted for you, uh, and as you can probably see just for convenience, in red are the letters of opposition. I've uh, also provided uh, 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 the stars in blue are properties that have received uh, minor variances in the past. Uh, there's one at 18 Chartwell, there's the property to the immediate north at 58, and there's a property to the immediate west at 533 Carlson, which was also created by way of consent in 1991. Uh, and I wanted to show that the, the distribution of the concerns, of course, are very uh, geographically close to the uh, subject property. I won't summarize uh, all the comments other than to say that there were some concerns expressed uh, about a fire issue um, from the circulation and the agency comments. There are no concerns from any of the departments. Uh, and I just uh, uh, commend to you the findings of staff that they've reviewed these concerns in detail and find support for the application. And the last slide is um, uh, sort of the reminder that we got to look at Section 5124 of the Planning Act. And I submit to you, sir, uh, uh, Madam Chair and members of the committee, that this application satisfies the requirements of the criteria of Section 5124. The lot uh, is suitable for residential use. It's not premature, it's in the public interest and the plan of subdivision not, not required in this instance. And um, I hope that you find the support for this application to prove it and the conditions are suggested are satisfactory. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cronus. Uh, can we have the first slide that you had up? Was that the, uh, the plot uh, um, figures or numbers? Slide number two. This one, oh, sorry. No, the one before you had the the slot, the the lot fabric and percentages. Oh yes, okay, that would be uh yes uh the, the next slide, the, one more. Uh, the one after that, yes. Yeah. There we go. Very good. So, this is what you anticipate uh, in terms of floor spacing would be on each lot well what what i've what i've taken what i've done here is i've summarized the zoning standards that uh, would apply for the severed and retained lots under the l uh, rl 3-0 it shows what the minimum lot area lot frontage is and then i covered all the other regulations uh, the lot coverage the floor space index the uh, setbacks um, the garage, the building height, uh, and then I and I and I plotted that uh, on the last two columns that would show that what that would yield, and in terms of a, a gross floor area, it would be approximately 238, uh, 233, um, and it would fall within the um, the um, uh, the parameters of the zoning bylaw, the floor space index being 42%, this would be 40, almost uh, slightly under 42% in the one instance and about 41 in the other instance. Any idea what the average floor area in that neighborhood is right now? Well, it, it varies. Um, uh, the ones uh, immediately across the street on the east side obviously are, ex are extensive, but uh, the, the uh, the bylaw itself doesn't permit anything more than 42%. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you. Are there any questions of Mr. Cronus from the committee members at this time? Items of clarification. Mr. Stewart, go ahead. You have to unmute yourself. Here we are. Yes. Yes. Go do ahead. you know? Oh, to the uh, the uh, uh, owner's planner. Do you know the uh, gross floor area of the house that ex currently exists on the subject property? I I believe I included that in the application. I'm I'm just uh, scrambling to look oh, it up. I'm assuming that was a question to me, Mr. Dickey. 
Oh, yes, yes. Unfortunately, I don't have that uh, at the tip of my fingers. Um, no, I, 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 I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. Uh, it, it is not, it's slightly bigger than uh, obviously the 238 square meters um, that we have uh, that were, that can be accommodated on the retained and severed lot. Hey, can I ask another question to yourself again? Go ahead, Go ahead Mr. Dickey. Um, you're fronting both of the, uh, the two lots onto uh, Carlson Lane. Yes. Why wouldn't you front the corner lot, the house on the corner lot, onto Chartwell? Uh, to the the shortest of the two on the corner lot, the shortest of the two frontages is your front lot line. So that would be Carson Lane under the zoning bylaw. So it's not to say that you can't design a house that would uh, have have the uh, the uh, the architecturally the appearance of, of having the chart wall frontage. But in order to do that, you would require variance because you would have to deem uh, chart well to be your front lot line, which is the longest of the two. So it's just a function of how the bylaws is, is uh, provides. But in doing that, and I'm concerned about the corner lot. <clears throat> in doing that, you have a 3.5 meter flankage yard on the chart well, whereas the house to the north has, has well, obviously has a seven, at least a 7.5 meter setback. Wouldn't the house, I mean, the, that corner house is going to project way into chart well relative to the house to the north. Am I missing something there or? Uh, the, the, uh, the, the minimum, uh, you, you require 1.2 meters on one side and, uh, three and a half on the other side. So the, it would three and a half meters and the, the house on Chartwell is set back, I believe seven and a half, although, uh, they had, uh, variances and I'm not quite sure if one of the variances was for front yard. I would have to check that against my notes here. Uh, the property to the saying, no matter what it is it's it's the, the, the house on the, the house on the corner lot that you're proposing would be at least three and a half meters closer to the chart well than the house to the north but it would have a seven and a half rear uh seven and a half meter rear yard setback so it would be further well, away well but you don't the see the rear yard on the street there'll be a bigger there'll be a bigger uh um delta between the uh the two properties uh from built form to built form you're missing me there delta <laughs> new term <laughs> what do you what, well the, 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 the uh, separation distance between the uh the south wall of 58 chartwell uh and the uh north wall of whatever dwelling goes on this property in the future uh, will be greater than having a side side yard to side yard relationship. Okay, All thank right. you, Mr. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Cronus. Thank you, Mr. Dickey. Um, are there any other questions? Go ahead, Mr. Twelsky. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I wanna pursue the line of questioning of uh, Mr. Dickey. Uh, Mr. Cronus, I'll concede that you meet the majority of the requirements um, for a severance, but I'm really struggling with complying with the official plan for the very issue that Mr. Dickey has brought up. Uh, I'm struggling with how this is compatible with the lotting pattern and the predominant lotting type. And in my view, the lotting pattern is more than just the size of the lot. And what this application is doing is reorienting the front yard from Chartwell to Carson Lane. And in doing so, you're taking a front yard and turning it into a flankage yard. Um, I did the math from your drawing, uh, existing 8.32 meter setback going to 3.5, that puts the proposed house 4.8 meters or 
6.8 feet in front of basically all the other houses on Chartwell. And from the rendering you provided, which to meet the minimum or the maximum 20, roughly 2,600 square feet, 238 meters, I think you said, you've shown us what I assume are complying renderings of a two-story solid wall facing Chartwell. I, I don't understand how this can meet the requirement to be compatible with the predominant lot sizing and lotting pattern when you're going to take a two-story wall and stick it out 16 feet further than the adjacent house and pretty much every house on Chartwell. Can, can you help me with how this is compatible? Yes, uh, so the um, there is a change for sure in the orientation of the built form, but in terms of the lotting, which is what the section 5124 says, the lotting patterns are compatible in terms of sizes and lot frontages. Now, the uh, illustrations that were provided was just an illustration such to demonstrate to you and the committee that uh, this is not an undersized lot. The, the blank wall that you see uh, is, hasn't been architecturally defined. It's just to show what the appearance is. Of course, there'll be uh, details that will evolve uh, once uh, someone is interested in purchasing a lot to develop a property, they will not want a blank wall. And I can assure you that's not gonna be the case. Uh, the, the property will project a bit, but in the absence of having a variance, which uh, may compound the issue of uh, severance, in the absence of having a variance that changes the lot front is to chart well, that's the relationship that would, uh, that would exist. Now, if, if, the, if the lot frontage was reorientated to chart well, you would have a three and a half meter setback uh, on the north side next to the neighbor at 58, and you can reduce your rear yard down to, I believe, three and a half meters. So um, uh, that, that is, uh, you know, that might be possible in the future as someone decides to build a property and reorientate it that way. But the election uh, made is to uh, uh, provide lots that fully comply with the zoning. And the built form, um, well, it project a bit in the front, um, is not uncommon to have uh, relationships like that. You see it all over the place. Um, you know, the, the lot at 5533 Carson to the west was carved out from the east half of uh, 55 Howard and the west half of uh, these lots here and created a lot that fit in between. Um, so you do have these varying relationships and, uh, and subdivisions are very common to have that and they require architectural detail and for sure that will happen here. Uh, you can make it comply and I think staff have come to the same conclusion. So just on that last comment, Mr. Cronus, and correct me if I'm wrong, but from my site visit, I. I understand that there were other severances creating smaller than typical lots in the neighborhood, but I believe in all those cases, the integrity of the frontage on the roads that the original houses fronted on has been maintained. And this, this would be a unique situation where you're reorienting to where you're creating a flankage where there's currently a frontage. Yes, that, that's, that's what's happening to Mr. Chalowski. That's, that's, uh, that's, for, that's real. That's for true. That's true. But it doesn't, um, it doesn't create a situation which is, this isn't an urban environment. Um, it is uh, in an area where growth uh, should be embraced, but it doesn't uh, sort of become totally uncharacteristic of the neighborhood that uh, it creates um, an issue, especially in an instance where the lots comply with all aspects of zoning. Um, you can uh, you can make it you can design it so it can soften that uh, the edge that you and uh, Mr. Dickey were speaking about. Uh, there's going to be landscape treatment. Um, there's going to be, as you can tell in, in in this part of Oakville, people put a lot of pride in their property, and this uh, is no exception. Thank you. Any other questions or items of clarification of Mr. Cronus at this time? Okay, 
Yes, Hinan. I will now open the floor to the neighbors who would like to address the committee. Um, Madam Secretary Treasurer, um, other than Miss, um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. I understand you're not Matthew Fani, but um, uh, Fargo. 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 Okay. Uh, other than Miss Fargo, are, are, is there anyone else who has raised their hand or has called in with interest for this application? Yes, Madam Chair, I'm just promoting more people. Um, Okay, very well. In, in, I'll have Ms. Fargo go first. Um, I'll just caution everybody with the 13 letters of objection. We have received all of them. We assure you we have read all of them. So in the interest of time, um, I'd appreciate if we don't repeat the same points um, as, as each other. And um, uh, we'll uh, try and respect the five minute uh, time limit per person. Go ahead, Ms. Fargo. Okay, I have a, um, by the way, this has been a wonderful community building exercise as we have all gotten to know each other much better in the neighborhood. Uh, and my presentation does represent um, the points of, of many of my neighbors. So hopefully we won't repeat. I do have a presentation that was sent in. It's in two parts. So forgive me if the time goes a little bit over. This is not me though, I am not Matthew. Um, Anna, this is Matthew's letter. I have- yes, uh, We have that on record. Oh, um, she's showing Matthew's letter though. I have a presentation yes. that I sent in. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, I am Matthew. She pulls that up. Yeah. So I can begin. Are you speaking on Matthew's behalf? No. Um, no, but uh, I've spoken to Matthew and I think if it's okay, uh, I would like to go first and then Matthew will follow up. Um, yes. So if I'm okay with that, Anna. Okay. Okay, wonderful. Um, first of all, I just, I am one of the red stars that was in the uh, previous presentation. I live at 47 Chartwell Road. Um, and I do want to just point out as not part of my presentation, but one of the reasons that there would be red stars gathering around the, the property in question is the only people that were issued letters are within 200 feet of the property in question. So nobody else in the neighborhood would be aware of this unless they were spoken to or driven past and noticed the signage on the building. So I don't think that should be indicative of any any other people not being concerned about this. Um, okay, we'll go to the next slide. I'm gonna power through a couple of slides as I realize it's a little bit long. I'm gonna be focusing on these two points. Next slide. Um, okay, so uh, I am gonna reference the Weirfold report. This was commissioned by 52 Chartwell Road, next. Is this not in a PowerPoint or is it just PDF? It, it is a PowerPoint, but this is how the system allows them to project it for us. Okay. Okay, so next slide. So in, um, in the Weirfold uh, proposal, it said the subject property is in the heart of a stable, well-established and mature residential neighborhood. We all agree this is a stable, well-established neighborhood. Next. So I'm, I'm speaking mostly from livable Oakville and the guiding principles, as you heard, are to preserve the distinct character. Next. So within this stable residential community, a construction of a new dwelling should be compatible with lot area and lot frontage. Next. As well as lotting patterns. Next. Scale, height and massing should be compatible. Next as well as setbacks and orientation. Next. So um, the line's got a skew oh. on this, uh, but this is an overhead view of the streetscape. Um, I'll go to the next slide because it's a little bit more visible. So you can see here a line drawn from the top to the bottom of Chartwell Road. Um, it is every single house on this street is in line with the 7.5 meter setback, if not more. And uh, the red, the red um, house that I've placed there is the same red house that uh, Mr. Cronus is identifying and that would um, cross over into the setback. Next. This is a different view of the lotting pattern. You can see top to bottom of Chartwell. These are, this, this neighborhood is characterized by large lot sizes with large homes on them. And the, uh, all of the photos that happen to be shown in the previous report are referring to the uh, houses on Carson Lane, which is a very small throughway between Howard Avenue and Chartwell Road. Um, 
the lot that he mentioned that was severed and cutting into backyards, which is right behind the star, that was a previously existing severed lot. So there was no application made to sever that lot when the, per when the owner who purchased that lot and then the two lots on Howard, um, he only had to sever the two lots on Howard. Next. You can see here the two uh, of the lot sizes that are smaller that he's referring to on Carson. One of them is an original heritage home. The other one on the corner, it was severed in the 1960s from the lot behind it. And that house that is on that lot still remains to be a Chartwell facing home. Um, and we're, we're arguing that the smallest lot from the neighborhood that he's referring to these four lots should not put, be examples to push for even smaller lots to be developed. Next. So these are the two homes that he's referring to that had been uh, severed in 2016. And you can see the original lot size is actually almost the combination of his lot and the neighboring lot that has been severed in two. They still remain the setback character on Howard Avenue, as well as they remain Howard facing um, lot, uh, houses. Next. This is another visual. So this is the house in question. Um, the scale height and massing of the current house is very, very much in line with the character of the neighborhood. Next. The setback, as you can see, is very much in line with the neighborhood. Next. And as you've already identified, the flankage is, is a huge issue. It's one of our biggest concerns. Um, reorienting to Carson Lane would have a four meter overage uh, facing onto Chartwell Road. Next. So again, this is just another view of the orientation of the home. Um, you know, he's referring to the variant that would have to be applied for to, if the lot was severed, a variance made to face back onto Chartwell. We're here discussing 52 Chartwell Road. This currently is a Chartwell property. My, uh, and, and all of the neighbors, our biggest concern is that this was never even applied to be a variance to turn to face Carson Road. We're kind of surprised that we're even here arguing about this, um, that he's arguing to have two properties face Carson Road when this is not even a Carson Road property. Next. Oh, I think there's a second presentation that has to be opened. I couldn't email yes. because of the images um, in one. True, Madam Chair, I tried to uh, combine and save because uh, the presentation was sent at 5 p.m. So I couldn't do better than this one. So um, I, I don't know what uh, to do with the second presentation because I couldn't combine and, and put all together. And the, okay. uh, the, the instruction was sent a long time ago how to combine and turn into PDF because we can, we can do like uh, different than it was sent a long time ago. Ms. Barlow, I apologize. Do you, have any, do you have any further points uh, that you have not mentioned already that you'd like to share? You can just uh, make them verbally so that we can move on to the next person. I think I, I do represent um, most of the neighbors that are here. And if, I, if it's okay to continue with the presentation, there's not many more um, slides. It was just the images that were so large that I couldn't email them as one. So the the thing is we can't, we're not able to project that presentation because it was delivered too late to transform. So it's not even available okay. to actually post. So if you are able okay. to share with, so there's, with us um, verbally. Yeah, so, then, uh, yeah. uh, the survey that was included in the proposal um, is an old survey. It doesn't include the home that it was constructed to the north, which you can see is, is a very large home that was end up being, that ended up being built um, and met all the variances and pushbacks that were are required for a new build. As well, it leaves out um, a large amount of trees that exist there today that were put in when uh, this home in question was renovated ten years ago, uh, and those trees have been developed as mature trees in the neighborhood. So. Even if this lot was severed and turned, um, those trees in question limit the size of the house that can be built there, as well as the orientation uh, remaining on Chartwell Road. Um, I just wanted to, the other points that I wanted to make was, uh, there's a lot of reference made to um, the Greater Horseshoe uh, Development Plan, and um, Mr. Cronus referred to this area as a urban growth center. In Livable Oakville Section E, uh, and the growth centers are referred to as places like Palermo, Bronte Village, or Bronte Park, Kerr Village, Midtown Oakville, um, Southeast Oakville, including the pocket that he had 
uh, dotted out versus the, the shaded out area. This is not an urban growth center. That refers to areas that um, center around transit centers mm -hmm. as well as um, provide opportunities for uh, population and uh, employment growth. And Southeast Oakville, this pocket does not um, contribute or, or get classified that in any kind of documentation. So I think he's referring to sort of overhead policies that have some buzzwords in them to put potentially suit his agenda. But if he's looking particularly at this neighborhood where we live, he should be referring to the livable Oakville documents that clearly state that this is not one of the urban growth centers and, and this is not a targeted growth node. Um, so just to summarize, I found the proposal misleading. I think it had uh, outdated survey documents. It referenced uh, policy documents that that didn't specifically apply in detail to our neighborhood. Um, I think it was premature. I think that an orientation variant should have been applied for to turn to Carson Lane first, um, as well as I, I don't know how without more information, like what he's provided today, this is the first we've seen of the drawings, that we could apply the livable Oakville standards. And at minimum, as we all know, whatever is decided here today can be taken to appeal at the uh, land the um, sorry the the land tribunal, and we would like documented um, whatever happens here that it be put in writing that wherever this goes, we insist that whatever gets built, if a severance is approved, it be a Chartwell facing home on the corner, and it meet the required setbacks in, in line with the rest of the street of seven point five meters, and so that's our request. Thank you for listening. Um, thank you. Uh, I just I, I will direct your attention that the 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 neighbors no member of the public is able to file for a um, appeal now that Bill Twenty Three has been introduced. I don't know if you missed the preamble, but I just wanted you to be aware of that. That you should research the More Homes Build Faster Act um, in order to understand where you can proceed with uh, with this further. So I just meant that if the uh, 52 Chartwell were to take this forward, we we ask that rather than just a decision be made, if this were accepted or rejected, that it comes with a, an explanation as to why it was accepted or rejected um, to push forward that we're looking for that, that setback and the Chartwell facing home, no matter what happens. Perfect, thank you. I appreciate your time and I appreciate your submission. Um, who uh, who do we have uh, in line? To, oh, uh, hold on, sorry. before, sorry, sir, just hold on for one second. Before I um, I let Ms. Farlow go, are there any questions of Ms. Farlow at this time or items of clarification? Mr. Tolaski, uh, do you have a question? Uh, not a question, uh, just trying to hopefully offer some clarity uh, to the last uh, comments that the resident made um, with respect to if this didn't get approved and if it was appealed. Um, if that were to happen and it would be, it's out of this committee's hands and it would be up to the residents to try to seek status at that hearing and remake any arguments that you're making tonight. So there shouldn't be any expectation on this committee um, as once it goes forward, it becomes a new hearing under a different body and you would have to, if you were so inclined, get involved in that. Um, it, if this committee is either gonna approve or deny it, but it doesn't go with recommendations. Um, if it's the applicant uh, decides to pursue it, if it did get uh, denied. So I just wanted to, Madam Chair, make it clear for the uh, neighbors that um, what the process would entail if what she was asking about were to occur. Thank you, Mr. Tolowski. I appreciate the clarification. Um, okay, so uh, Mr. Fal Falo. Matthew, yeah. Matthew, um, you have further comments. I would appreciate if you limit them to but, anything that has not been covered already. Well, actually, I, I live at 58 Charleville. I'm the wall-to-wall wall -wall neighbor to 52 Charleville. 
and I'm going to be the most effective person in the neighborhood, I believe. So I prepared a two page, which is going to take about two, two minutes. And I would like to talk about it if possible. Good. No, go ahead. You, this is your time, sir. I'm, I'm sure. just trying to moderate so that we are able to um, hear everyone's uh, perspective. Sure, it, will, it, it wouldn't take more than two minutes. Uh, my wife, Dr. Morgan Niku, myself, and our two children are living at 58 Charleville, wall-to-wall neighbor to the subject property. Charm and appealing character of the neighborhood comes from the setback and all lots being uniform. My house is about seven and a half meter back from Charleville Road, and so is the rest of the houses along Charleville Road. One of the points that I'm struggling with is that there is no supporting material showing how these six houses are going to be built and how this will affect the character of the neighborhood. No rendering or conceptual drawing was submitted. It doesn't show how many trees are going to be cut, both on city property and subject property. It doesn't even have an up-to-date survey. Conveniently, doesn't properly show neighbors' homes. It doesn't show the driveway along Charter and Carson. It is misleading. I'm not sure how many. Uh, I'm not sure how the committee uh, committee can make the sound decision on this matter with no supporting material or even a proper and up to date survey was forwarded. Despite all the fact that I mentioned, one of the most important factor currently there is a house on the subject lot fronting Charter Road which goes with the uh, with predominant flooding pattern of the surrounding neighborhood. What the African is asking is changing the front of the house from Charter Road to Carson Lane. By doing so, Charterville will be flanked yard and Carson will be the front yard. And then, I emphasize on this, and only then the lot will be complying by the bylaws. The fact that the lot will be aligned with zoning requirements after changing its front and side shouldn't be part of the discussion right now. In my opinion, such reasoning will, will make this matter more minor than it is. I don't see what this kind of reasoning can be applied to this law. So the consent of the severance could be provided. The proposed variance should be pro, uh, proposed in a manner that the variance is a minor variance and it complies with the zoning bylaw, which doesn't seem to be the case on this application. On page seven, an applicant's lawyer, he's bringing two examples of prior approval, the house at 52 Harvard, which he shows uh, the pictures. The house at Harvard had a frontage on Harvard, and after severance, both frontage are still on Harvard, parallel to the existing houses on Harvard. They didn't turn the house 90 degree and they didn't change the frontage. The setback is the same as the rest of the neighborhood. It was a very wide lot, I believe about 45 meter plus or minus. Subject property is only 25.85 meter wide. He also showed a, a picture of 307 Charcoal Road, the same scenario. They were on Charcoal, they're still on Charcoal. They didn't change the front yard to the flankage yard. Approving the severance is letting someone to put a house on my backyard. Severance of this house means that I will lose my family of four privacy, and this is a direct conflict with livable Oakville policy 2.2, which says, which says preserve, enhance, and protect the distinct character, cultural heritage, living environment, and sense of community of neighborhood. Direct the majority of growth to identified location when higher density transit and pedestrian oriented development can be accommodated and so on. Committee of adjustment is not letting people to have balcony in my area for the sake of neighboring property privacy. How is it putting a house other than a balcony in my backyard is justified by applicants. Committee of Adjustment refused an application on, Ju on January 25th, 2023 for the house at 492 Lakeshore Road. Actually, I heard Mr. Michael Pulaski's comment on that, which has the same scenario of this last. I'm asking to do the same for this application. 
The address of this property is 52 Chartwell, and it should be treated as 52 Chartwell. It is well in line and parallel to all the other houses on Chartwell, Chartwell South of Lecture. Changing its front yard to a flankage yard is not a minor adjustment. Any new build would have to be compatible with the regulation of a specific zone. The fact the lot will be reoriented means the corner lot will be uh, will uh, the corner lot when designed will not be compatible in terms and orientation from Chartwell. Setback from Chartwell drastically change the street and will put home far closer to Chartwell than every other home all which are basically in line in terms of terms of, uh, of front of them. If I approve 52 Charfield, it will be closer to Charfield by four meters. The policies of livable Oakville official plan will practically impossible to apply to this application. The last point that I would like to talk about is provincial policy, a policy a statement. It has become a buzzword for people who want to over the provincial and town's own policy. Provincial policy a statement 2020, together with the growth plan for greater golden horseshoes, the region of Halton official plan and the livable Oakville plan, all deal with growth requirements and the efficient use of land to accommodate growth moving forward. While the, while the goals and objective outlined in the statement and plans are important, it is important to note that growth is prioritized in growth areas. Given that the provincial policy statement was prepared in 2020 and the Oakville official plan was updated in August 2021, the current official plan has been updated in a manner to have consideration for and to implement the provincial policy assessment. Oakville official plan does a great job of addressing growth within stable residential communities and provide detailed requirements and guide guidelines that are to be used to analyze each property application and its own merits and on the impact it has on the neighborhood and on neighboring homes. To ensure that growth is implemented according to the official plan, it is important to, pro to properly apply such an analysis and not just simply rely on the side of buzzword containing it in the statement and policy and let the growth accommodated by the certain of a new lot out by the criteria provided within section 11.1.8 and 11.1.9 of Oakville official plan. Our area is not a designated gross, gross note. Uh, the applicant showed a few, a few example. Uh, none of them applies to this lot. Changing the frontage of this yard to a side yard, I believe is gonna be a big mistake and it's gonna, it's gonna change the, the character of the neighborhood. And I'm strongly against it. And thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Matthew. Are there um, questions of Mr. Matthew at this time? Okay, I see none. Um, Madam Secretary, Treasurer, are there any other members of the um, neighbors that would like to speak to the committee that have raised their hand or called in? Um. Madam Chair, I promote uh, Ms. Esther Falconer uh, to the meeting, but I'm not sure if she wants to speak or not. Also, uh, if you can repeat Point to... Six. Yeah. Mr. Falconer? And at 64 Chartwell Road, and I don't need five minutes to tell you what everyone else has said tonight. I'm going to be very, very picky and just give you a very few points that may be major to anybody else, but they certainly are major to myself and my husband. Okay? About at 52 Chartwell Road is one of the smallest lots on the west side of Chartwell. So, 
of allowing this variant to have, okay, I, I, I agree with this bylaw and that bylaw and all the rest of it, you're going to change the view of all the houses on the west side of Chartwell, and it's now no longer going to be 7.5 metres back from Chartwell Road, because everyone said it, I don't need to re-say it, but this lot is one of the smallest lots on this side of the street. There is a bank of mailboxes on Carson Lane that will have to be relocated if they put these two houses on Carson Lane. There is no way I walk that street three times a day, and I am telling you, there is nowhere else that the mailboxes can go. There are also two very large trees on Carson Lane on that property where you are talking about the frontage from Carson Lane. I came here six years ago. I have made three applications to have one tree removed from my front lawn, but it's on the town of Oakville property, and I was not able to do it. So I am going to wait and see how you're going to take these two old trees down from Carson Lane to allow this application to go through. So I am definitely a great objective. Your time. Thank you, Ms. Faulkner. Is there anyone else uh, that is waiting to speak to the um, to the committee? Um, Madam Chair, if you can repeat, if anybody wants to speak, they, they need to raise the hand. Yes, I have already said so. If you are Thank in you. attendance and you'd like to speak to that application, please raise your hand so that you can be invited to address the committee. While we wait, I do have a question of uh, planning staff. Who is responsible um, on this application? Hi, Madam Chair, Lee, myself. Hello, Mr. Hassan, how are you? Good, and yourself? Good, thanks. Um, so given everything we've heard here today, um, I understand that staff is in support of this application, but I'd like to know what kind of discussions you had with the applicant regarding the orientation from Chartwell to Carson, and um, ultimately how staff was okay with this change. Yep. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks for the question and thanks for uh, being able to address the committee. Um, there's been no discussion with the uh, the applicant um, to date. Typically, in some instances, the applicant reaches out to planning staff to get a sense of, um, I guess, the, the position that staff would take. In this particular instance, the application was submitted and staff reviewed it on its own merits. Um, when I actually got the application, I'm, I'm not dismissing any of the comments that the neighbors have made. I actually looked at the application myself and, and found it odd that the, the Chartwell property itself was being proposed to be severed. But then I looked back at the staff report um, that one of our other planners had authored back in 2015, identifying that this lot had potential to be severed. Um, and then I had to look into matters being the zoning bylaw in terms of lot area and frontage. I even went as far as discussing the matter with our development engineering staff to see if there'd be any road widening requirements that would reduce the lot area or frontage of the proposed lots, but that wasn't the case. Um, and then again, looking into the actual characteristics of the neighborhood, which have been um, clearly outlined by the residents, um, noting that Chartwell Road itself is comprised of very large lots and related homes. But as outlined in the staff report, there's one side of Chartwell Road that is designated as a special policy area with a specific zone that allows for those lots to exist with those homes. And then the west side of uh, that residential area contains a low density residential designation in the official plan and related zoning. So if I can turn the committee's attention to, I guess, the staff report, I think the zoning bylaw map is the, the clearest indication of the lotting pattern on that section of the, the neighborhood. So there is a characteristic difference between Charro Road itself and then the surrounding neighborhoods. So I think that's an important distinction. 
And then further to that, in terms of the orientation um, in question, um, I actually took a look at the, the lotting pattern of Carson Lane itself and the, the house across the street. So I guess at the southwest corner of Carson Lane and Tarwell Road, that uh, lot itself has a frontage of 27 meters along Carson Lane and then a frontage of 30 meters along Tarwell Road. So in that instance, 42 Carson Lane would be a fronting onto Carson Lane and its flanker would be onto Chartwell. So although we're not obviously talking about that property itself, if that house were to be torn down, there's no heritage um, protection on that property to my knowledge. It would it in itself be allowed to, um, I guess, change its orientation towards Chartwell and be 3.5 meters off of that lot line. And then the same 7.5 meters would apply the Carson Lane. So what you would in effect have is if this were to be approved, the corner lot um, that we're looking at right now would interface with the, the lot on the south side being 42 Carson Lane. And then you'd have 536 Carson Lane facing the, I guess, westerly lot that's proposed to be created and so on and so forth. So that's generally the analysis that um, I took looking at the application um, without having any discussions with the applicant. Sorry for the long answer. No, oh, that's that's perfect. Gives us clarification um, as to how staff came to that resolution and um, puts everyone else's uh, comments into perspective for us as well. So thank you. Are there any questions of Mr. Hassan at this time, Mr. Dickey? I see your finger up. Um, I was looking at number forty-two Chartwell myself. I went and looked at the assessment rolls. And on the assessment rolls, it says number 42 Chartwell is 88.29 feet of frontage and 100 feet of depth. You seem to think or seem to say that 42 Chartwell has 20 some odd meters of, of flankage. It's, it's 100 feet of depth is 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 30 point whatever meters. Well, I'm, I'm could you rhyme off your figures again? What you think 42 is because in my numbers, when 42 Chartwell gets redeveloped, it's going to face Chartwell. You're saying yes. the other way. Yeah, through you, Madam Chair, I just did a quick calculation on our GIS mapping and I dimensioned the, the lot line along Carson Lang being 27 meters and then the lot line along Chartwell Road being 30 meters. So, as Mr. Cronus um, had explained, that the zoning bylaw defines the front yard as the shortest lot line. So the shortest lot line being the 27 meters would be along Carson Lane. So that's where you would have your 7.5 meter setback. And given that Chartwell Road is the flankage yard, you'd have your 3.5 meter setback because it's within the RL3-0 zone. And we're going to have the same problem with that house, which is like a 1940s to 1950s house. When it gets redeveloped, we're going to have the same situation again. Well, it's going to, the, 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 the town would want that to be fronting on to Carson Lane and their flankage will be 3.5 meters. Could be. Well, yes, yeah, through you, Madam Chair, that's correct. I mean, if, if all the regulations of the zoning bylaw are complied with, if they were to apply for a building permit, this committee actually would see any um, notices or applications in front of them. It would just be eligible for a building permit if they fully complied. Thank you. Oh, sorry, through Madam Chair, I can't hear it. You're still on mute. It's it's not typical that we allow questions from the residents to our planners. So, but given the situation, given that we would like to get you as much information as possible. I will allow for questions to be directed at me. So please re be respectful of this or else I will, I will deny any hands that are raised. This is not a rebuttal. It's not a back and forth. This is for the committee's knowledge and assessment of what this application is. And I need you to be certain that we have heard you all and this is part of our process to get all the information that we need. Go ahead, Ms. Fowler. Yes, thank you for allowing us. Um, this is just adding clarification. I am just receiving information from the owner of 40 Chartwell. 
that the lot size is 100 by 88. And I also would just like to add, um, we are very close friends with them. They have a young small child and they have no intentions of selling anytime soon. So I feel like this part of the um, session is adding just speculation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. Uh, I don't think that there's any speculation. I think it's a matter of understanding the lot uh, variety in the neighborhood and assessing how things would proceed in the future, uh, regardless of who owns the property at this time or not. It's a matter of understanding the zoning bylaw, its uh, stipulations, as well as it, how it affects certain parcels of land across the area. Um, I see uh -huh. Mr. Yes, I would Mr. like to talk. Yeah. Matthew. Uh, yes, this is Matthew. Uh, talking about 52 Chartwell, again, that the address is 52 Chartwell. You don't uh, need to, uh, yes. sir, I, I'm not going sure. to interrupt you. Sure. Sure. You don't need to repeat your points. We've yeah. heard them. Yeah. Believe yes. me, we yeah. have heard them. Yeah. They're on yeah. record. So yeah. in the, I would in really the, appreciate yeah, that. Sure. sure. In the future, anything might happen. Right now, the zoning by law is asking for a certain criteria. In five years from now, the zoning bylaw might change and says, Matthew, your lot, is, your lot is 80 foot. Now you can divide it into four lots. Yes, I understand that. We are talking about right now, not in the future. In the future, we might change something. Should we change it from today? No. This is the future. We're talking about right now. Right now, 42 charcoal exists the way it is. So might happen okay. something. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Matthew. I appreciate it. Uh, again, I'm going to repeat this and there will be no further questions or rebuttal. We understand that we are dealing with the situation and the application on its own merits as of today and as of the current bylaws. Um, I will remind you that in 2014 and 2020, there have been amendments to the zoning bylaw and people would come to us with applications and say, well, the bylaw was this or was that, and we would have to contend with the matter. Again, I remind you that the questions that we ask are for us to formalize our own opinion about this matter and get all the information that we require to make a decision on this application. So please, uh, if you've already addressed the committee, put your hand down. We are not going to be taking any further questions. We appreciate your submissions and we will take it from here. Madam Secretary Treasurer, in the meantime, has anyone raised their hand for this application? Um, Madam Chair, I don't see anybody else to, uh, that wants to speak. Very well, thank you. Um, and now my, my question is to the committee members. Do you have any questions of Mr. Hassan before we take the matter into committee? Or if you have any questions of the um, neighbors who have spoken, this will be the time for you to advise me should you have any. Okay. Madam Chair, maybe I can have a couple of seconds for a rebuttal if, if that's no, appropriate. No, uh, yeah, I'm getting and, to that, Mr. Cronus. I just need you. to find out if the committee members have any questions of Mr. Hassan or any of the neighbors who have spoken, and then you will have your time to address all the concerns that you've heard here today. Do we have any questions of Mr. Hassan or the neighbors who've addressed the committee thus far? Okay, I see none. I, I don't see Mr. Hardcastle on my, so I seem to have lost, no, he's right here. I just have to, uh, Toggle back, back and forth. Okay, I see you nodding. Thank you, Mr. Harcastle. All right, go ahead, Mr. Cronus. This is your time to address all the concerns that have come before us, and then we'll uh, ask uh, any further questions of you at that time. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Um, uh, there, there's no doubt been a very thorough discussion, and uh, you have lots on your plate for sure. Uh, I want to say that uh, we are not changing the zoning standards. A couple of presenters. We're applying the minor variance tests, uh, and that's not the case. It's not something under Section 5124. Uh, I, I'd like to say this. We, we did not discuss it with staff. Uh, we wanted them to come to their own independent conclusion analysis. You heard they did that thoroughly, and they remained consistent with their findings in 2016, which uh, provided for the orientation of the lots on, Cars on Carson Lane. I um, uh, just want to speak briefly about 58 Chartwell. 
because they received minor variance approval that actually reduced the front yard setback to 6.85 meters, and that's application CAVA 161-2014, among other variances. You know, they had a height variance and some other stuff, but in terms of the, the reasons we are talking today, the, uh, the, that setback has been reduced to 6.85 meters. Uh, there was discussion on uh, 533 Carson, that was approved by the region before the town of Oakville received land division uh, uh, powers. That was re that was approved by the region, a land division under application B99-91. That was in 1991. That created that lot. So when uh, that individual came forward uh, sometime in 20, uh, I believe, 15 to build a home, he too required variances, including the front yard. Um, uh, the the um, the the slides that uh, uh, Ms. Farlow showed, um, there were clearly uh, varying um, uh, lot uh, front yard uh, setbacks of the buildings. As you get closer to Lakeshore, I noticed some buildings fairly close. The same is true for the ones on Howard. So there is no uniformity of setbacks. Uh, very few, uh, I, I believe, are in, in the 7.5 meter range, as I indicated, the property to the north at 58 Chartwell, which in fact is up for sale, is at 6.85 meters. Um, the concerns of Ms., uh, uh, of the owner of 58 Chartwell, again, uh, uh, a lot of emphasis on the zoning. We, we, meet and we, meet, we meet all the zoning standards, or we can meet. There's no variances before you today to provide for a reduction in the uh, front yard uh, lot frontages or any of the areas or the depths. Uh, there was reference to 307 Chartwell. I'm not quite sure how that came up. 307 Chartwell was considered by the committee, um, uh, uh, I believe around April 4th. And that's uh, for a property way north on uh, Lakeshore, uh, on Lakeshore Drive. And that's on the east side in the special policy area, lot, uh, a large uh, frontage, uh, characteristics, it's not the case here. Uh, there's no comparison. And the concerns about uh, the trees, uh, that can be uh, mitigated with the alignment of the driveway. Uh, there's a seven and a half meter setback far back from uh, the trees. And if the driveway or the house needs to be flipped, that can be accommodated. Um, I mean, I can repeat a lot of the things I said. And in fact, I, I commend the comments made by Mr. Hassan, who actually uh, did a a thorough evaluation on his own and came to the conclusion that this is inappropriate. Under the under section 150 under section 15124 of the Planning Act, there is no um, you know there is no um, test for setbacks. Uh, it's it's the dimension and shape of the lots proposed, uh, which uh, you know you've heard the evidence of that. Uh, the suitability of the lots uh, uh, for the residential use, you heard the evidence of that. Uh, you heard that it's not premature, it's in the public interest as expressed through the town planner. So um, I, I, I hope you find in favor of the consent application uh, that it meets all the tests that we just discussed. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Konis. Um, I, I'm going to ask you a similar question that I asked of planning staff. Given the comments from the neighbors and we know how this committee uh, values working with our neighbors and having a cohesive environment um, uh, and community. Given their opposition, have you considered reorienting in terms of from where the application has been set forth now to front on Carson? Uh, Madam Chair, the, uh, here's what I can offer. We can look at it. Uh, of course, but that requires a minor variance, and I would need to come back to you and ask and ask for that permission. If, if that is something that I hear collectively there's support for, I can certainly ask for a deferral if it pleases the community that we heard their concerns, and go back to my uh, to my client and say, look, can we reorientate it in this way? And if it re requires a minor variance, we can apply for a minor variance. Um, uh, you know, but I'm I'm looking. I'm looking for solutions. I'm always a solution oriented person. If that is something that the committee uh, thinks that it's suitable to pursue, I'm prepared to do so. Uh, no one likes to appeal. 
And why not defer right from the start, seeing the amount of opposition and actually work with the neighbors to see what best suits the neighborhood? Uh, well, it, I, I... I mean, we all the, got the, the letters. We all had this. I, I received the letter. Uh, in fairness, the, the, just so a little background context, the application was circulated uh, in advance because it was on a delegated uh, um, stream. So it was it what may have not been subject to a committee hearing. It was only after the circulation that the letters uh, uh, were filed that the uh, the secretary treasurer determined that it's going to go on the hearing stream. But it wasn't until Friday that I received these letters. There was no time. If I asked for these letters to be distributed to me about six eight weeks ago, I would have had that discussion. I would have really honored the opportunity to have this discussion, but it wasn't offered to me, but I did ask. Very well, thank you for your clarification. Are there any questions of Mr. Konis at this time? Mr. Talowski, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I think I heard a half willingness to defer by Mr. Cronus, um, which I personally would uh, welcome. Uh, I think that would be a, a very appropriate move considering the comments you've heard from the community and some of the committee members. It's absolutely his right to proceed, but um, I thought I heard him suggest he may be willing to defer and I would like to ask the question outright whether Mr. Cronus would like to proceed or would like to defer his application. I know it's not normal to defer after an hour and a half of discussion, but um, that's why we have this discussion to inform everybody in the process. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mr. Talowski. Um, uh, being a past member of the committee, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, and I think uh, under the circumstances, it, it would make uh, abundant of sense to see if there's something that could be done to uh, find a solution. I think the predominant concern I heard is the orientation of at least the lot on the east to have a Chartwell orientation rather than a Carson. And um, I, like I disclosed earlier, that would require a variance to treat Chartwell as a frontage rather than Carson. And I'm willing to explore that. And on that basis, I think a deferral is prudent and I would support that. Okay. Um, are there any other questions of Mr. Cornus or comments by other members of the committee? Mr. Talowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to thank Mr. Cronus for that. I think it's very prudent and uh, in the best interest of everybody. Thank you, Mr. Talowski. I, I, uh, if you want to move a, a motion to defer to allow this discussion to occur, and uh, I would undertake the file of whatever I need to file immediately to get this back on your agenda. Madam Chair, I believe Mr. Cronus indicated he was going to seek a deferral. So I think it's just a matter of the committee voting on whether to defer or proceed. I don't think we need a motion to defer. Um, Mr. Hardcastle, I don't see you on my um, on my monitor, so I just wanted to be sure that you're with us. I'm with you, Madam Chair. Okay. Well, if all right. Um, all those in support of a deferral uh, at this time, please raise your hands. Okay. I see you, Mr. Harkessel. Okay. Your application, Mr. Cronus, has been deferred. Um, just for the members of the community who have been uh, participating in this uh, discussion, uh, I'd like you to know that now that the matter has been deferred, the applicant will have to um, resubmit the application at a later time with uh, new uh, drawings, and you'll have the opportunity to have a discussion with the applicant, and hopefully that will bring forth a more acceptable and fruitful uh, discussion and uh, application before the committee. And um, I appreciate everyone's submission and everyone's comments. 
we do have certain um, uh, orders in terms of how the meeting is supposed to be conducted and the quorum. And so um, thank you for your participation and for your patience. Have thank a good you, evening, uh, everyone. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Thank you for uh, the time. I know it was a long one. Good night. Have a good evening. Bye now. Thank you, everybody. Good evening. Okay, the uh, next matter on our agenda is a variance application, CAV 060 of 2023 at 216 Tilford Road. Again, it's CAV 060 of 2023 at 216 Tilford Road. If there's anyone who's interested in speaking to this application, please call 905-815-6095. Staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions to join the video conferencing. Who is here representing this uh, application? Madam Secretary Treasurer. Um, Mr. Hinckley, uh, Stephen, yeah. okay. Stephen Hinckley. I'm here. Mr. Hinckley, if you're here, can you please turn your camera on? I would love yeah. to be able to do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Depends if you are on a laptop or you're in a, on a, an iPad. No, uh, I'm on my home computer, but... Uh, um, I think it's in the top left or top right corner. Or bottom, sorry, bottom. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Hardcastle says it's in the bottom corner. And you can turn the camera on from there. Start video. There, there we, we go. We see right. you and we hear you. Go ahead. Okay, great. This is an application to permit an accessory structure. So this is your time. Go ahead, sir. Yes. So I'm the landscape contractor. My clients bought this house and we recognized uh, when they bought the house that there was a cabana in the side yard, but it was on the property line and didn't allow for drainage. So we relocated the cabana, um, but we inadvertently put it in the side yard where we didn't realize it was not allowed because it was already there. We assumed it was. So if you look at, I don't know if you can see my uh, landscape plan. It's the second slide, I believe. Just give them a moment. I think they're trying to put it up. Would you wait for a couple seconds? Yes, I... no problem. Oh, there we go. Can you see my cursor on the uh, on the plan? No, this is not an interactive uh, okay. All right. presentation. You'll just have to direct us to where you'd like us to look. So on the right hand side of the drawing, you'll see that there is um, what there's a rectangle with an X through it. That was the original location of the cabana. 
We relocated it further back towards the backyard, but still technically in the side yard. Um, we've allowed for proper drainage to go behind it so that we don't have any buildup or drain onto a neighbor's property. But apparently it's no longer allowed to build in that area. So we've asked for, instead of a 4.2 meter setback, a one meter setback from the property line so that the cabana can stay where it is. Very well. And there are, um, there are photos that show it, the original cabana and uh, the current cabana, if you scroll down. So uh, the top picture is it, its current position right now. Um, if you scroll down further, um, if you see that orange paint line, that's actually uh, the prop, the fence is in the wrong spot. Um, but my clients don't want to change it. But the picture at the very bottom, if you go down, um, no, I'm sorry, scroll up. This one, there's another one, hang on here. Okay, the one with uh, the plank in the foreground at the bottom of your page, that is the original cabana location, or actually the one below it is. So you see it is, you see the air conditioner on the right, the cabana has now been brought this side of that air conditioner. And a meter off the property line and about 80, maybe 80 centimeters away from the fence line. So we're hoping you guys can see your way to uh, allow this in this particular instance and um, we can all get on to the next project. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Hinckley. Are there any questions of Mr. Hinckley from the members of the committee? Okay. I still can't see Mr. Castle. Okay. I see none. All right, who would like to, uh, we'll take the matter into committee now. Um, who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Hardcastle. Madam Chair, sorry. Um, can you just repeat again? Uh, if anybody wants to speak, they need to raise a hand. Okay, sorry. has Thank anyone you. called in? Has anyone called in for this application and would like to speak to this application? Please raise your hand. We have no letters of opposition or support for that matter uh, on hand from uh, I support the it. public. Yes, of <laughs> course. We had uh, um, one request to attend. Um, Mr. L John Linstead, correct. has he attended? Has he raised his hand? Um, I don't see him as of right now. Mr. Linstead, if you are in attendance, please raise your hand if you'd like to speak to the committee. If not, we will be taking the matter into committee. Very well. Mr. Hardcastle, you can proceed with your motion, please. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Having undertaken my site visit, having reviewed the um, submission materials, including the written staff report and the applicant's drawings. We've heard the presentation from Mr. Hinckley. Um, I'm prepared to put forward a motion of approval, finding that the uh, requested uh, variance conforms to the four tests of the act and will have uh, no uh, impact upon adjacent properties. Um, I would make that motion subject to two conditions. Uh, those being that the relocated shed be in general accordance with the plans dated January 20th, 2023, revised February 21st, 2023, as submitted, and that the approval will expire within two years of the date of the decision if the building permit has not been issued. Very well. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, the application has been approved. None opposed. Have a good evening, Mr. Hinckley. Thank you very much.
Application CAV 061 of 2023 at 311 Spruce Street. Again, it's CAV 061 of 2023 at 311 Spruce Street. If you're interested in speaking to this application, please call 905-815-6095. Staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions to join the video conferencing. I have Ms. Stephanie Medviva. Good evening. Good evening. For Go ahead. Public. So for the public record, my name is Stephanie Medviva. I'm with Glen Starn Associates. The address is 10 Kingsbridge Garden Circle in Mississauga, Ontario. I'm the registered agent on behalf of the property owner. If I could have the next slide, please. The property before us tonight is municipally known as 311 Spruce Street. It's located on the north side of Spruce Street. It's also located within an established residential neighborhood. The neighborhood can be understood as having an eclectic character with an interesting mix of historic and newer forms and diversity of architectural styles. The application before us tonight is the owner is seeking permission to construct a two-story replacement dwelling on the property itself. This application triggers one variance for an increased lot coverage. If I could have the next slide, please. So the variance being requested is to increase the permitted lot coverage to 24.74%, whereas 19% is permitted. Overall, the proposed dwelling has been planned and designed to be complementary and compatible with the neighborhood character with the established neighborhood character. This includes the presence of a front covered porch, which I'll indicate in just a moment, an integrated garage and a roof line that incorporates elements above the ground level. If I could have the next slide, please. Just very quickly, this is the site plan. So generally the proposed dwelling has been located in general accordance with the existing lot pattern. It's by doing this, it preserves the neighborhood character, not only of the subject lands, but the neighborhood as well. Just like to highlight that of the requested lot coverage, approximately 4.3% or 27.9 square meters of this requested coverage is contained within the front covered porch and a walkout basement area. If I could have the next slide, please. So just very quickly, again, to reiterate that a guiding principle of the divine has been to, to ensure that the built form and built form features are complementary and compatible with the surrounding area. So again, that includes the front covered porch, an integrated garage and roof elements that serve to visually break up the massing and reduce the visual appearance of scale and mass. If I could have the next slide, please. Here's just quickly the proposed rear elevation. Again, there are some uh, setbacks and various features that serve to break up the visual massing. It also provides for a well-designed built form. And lastly, if I could have the next slide. These are just images of the side elevation. So again, it, it serves to indicate that the walls themselves are not just blank walls. And there are a number of built form features, various architectural design styles, um, sorry, materials, architectural materials that are to be provided. And overall, these are complementary of the subject lands and the surrounding neighborhood character. So just very quickly, the requested coverage I would highlight is within range of previous approvals and existing building coverage patterns within the surrounding area. As outlined in my submission letter, it's my opinion that the proposed application does conform to the four tests under the Planning Act. Thank you and happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Medviva. Are there any questions of Ms. Medviva at this time? Okay, I see none. Madam Secretary, has anyone called in for this application or uh, raised their hand to speak to the application? There is no phone call uh, at this time. Very well, and we do have uh, three letters of support from Adam and Julie Schuler a Greg Gluli and a Craig Merrigan. If there are no questions and no one has called in for this application, we can take the matter into committee. Who would like to move a motion? 
Go ahead, Monsieur. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, after reading the uh, uh, after reading the uh, submitted materials, including the drawings and the staff reports, I have con conducted a site visit and uh, have heard the presentation from the applicant. It has been determined that uh, this proposal meets the four tests. Uh, four tests. So I'd like to put a motion forward to approve the pro proposal subject to the two conditions. One is the uh, uh, drawing be constructed in general accordance with the submitted site plan and the elevation drawings dated February 21st, 2023. And that the, appro the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Thank Very you. Very well, thank you, Ms. Hsu. Are there any uh, discussions on this recommendation? Okay, I see none. All those in support? Okay, the application. Uh, all those, well, I'm assuming Ms. Hsu is not opposed because I didn't see your hand go up, but yes. Uh, none opposed. The application has been approved. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Application CAV 064 of 2023 at 2324 Falling Green Drive. Again, it's CAV 064 of 2023 at 2324 Falling Green Drive. If there's anyone who's interested in speaking to this application, please call 905-815-6095. Staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions to join the video conference. Good evening, Mr. Galvez. Um, okay. This is a uh, rear edition of a sunroom. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Uh, I apologize. I had to be in my car because I got kicked out of the office, but um, I'll be, I'll say the a few words. So the client on this one wanted a sunroom, just the space to enjoy during various seasons or if it's raining. And in order to do that, to make it a decent, comfortable size inside, we needed uh, a variance for the rear yard setback. So the structure is about 10 feet and a half by basic almost 17 feet wide. And the, we, the rear yard setback is seven meters, but we're asking for 6.18. So uh, a 0.82 variance. Uh, and it's basically, that's the only variance we would need to accomplish this little sunroom. But if you looked at the elevations, it's uh, the roof line is the same eave height as the living family room to the left. Um, and it's just, uh, it's just a, a simple roof, peaked roof. If there's another page there on the elevations. That's okay, yeah, so it's just a peaked roof, um, several windows around, uh, mainly facing the rear yard. There it is, yeah, so the, the eave heights are matching to the left. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's keeping it fairly simple. And again, it's just more uh, a room to enjoy during the different seasons. And we need about uh, two foot eight or 0 0.82 meters in order to do this. That is it, I'm happy to take any questions. Very well. Uh, are there any questions of Mr. Galvez at this time? Okay, I see none. Has anyone called in with respect to this application, Madam Secretary Treasurer? There is no phone call at this time. Very well. Um, we do not have any letters of support or opposition for that matter. Um, who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Dickey. <coughs> Um, based upon my review of the owner's application and the site plan and the building uh, elevation, together with my site visit and the planning task report, the, uh, no comments or uh, opposition.
opposition from the neighbors. Um, it's my opinion that the application or the, or the variance is minor and conforms to the test under the Planning Act and would have no negative impact on the neighbors. Therefore, I put forth a motion and recommend that the application as applied for be approved subject to the conditions that the um, addition be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevations and drawings dated, I believe the date of March 2nd, 2023, if anybody sees that as being different, I might be wrong, uh, and that the approval expires two years from the date of decision that the building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Very well, thank you, Mr. Dickey. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none, all those. I was going to say opposed, I don't know why. <laughs> all those in support. Okay, the application has been approved, none opposed. Have a good evening, thank Mr. Galvez. Thank you so much, Madam Chair and Committee. Application CAV 065 of 2023 at 3232 Shoreline Drive. Again, it's application CO, um, CAV 065 of three, uh, at 3232 Shoreline Drive. If there's anyone who's interested in speaking to this application, please call 905. You would think I know this number by heart by now, but I don't. 905-815-6095 and uh, Staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions at that time. Who do we have here? Mr. Bartolini. Bartolini, sorry. Um, Madam uh, Chair, I don't see Mr. Bartolini. However, Andre Maureen, the owner, is present as of right now. Oh, okay. Ms. Maureen, are you representing yourself or is Mr. Yes. Bartoloni going to speak for on your behalf? No, I will actually represent myself and my wife, Sherry. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Good evening, Mr. Andre. Go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to uh, kind of go over uh, our request. Uh, all it is is actually um, we have a deck that had to be demolished because it was old and dangerous. Uh, as we're remodeling the whole house, uh, this is part of our project. Um, the um, what we're asking actually is really to have the same size as what we already had. Um, so we would go with a, uh, a variance there that would be uh, like 79 centimeters beyond the setback. Um, so obviously, uh, as I said, it's going to be the same size as uh, as what we had, as what was what was removed. Um, obviously, it's going to be an improved deck because the previous one didn't have a proper drainage on the surface, and that's how it got all uh, rotten and it was unsafe. And of course, the look's going to be all enhanced, so we feel like there's no negative impact on um, visibility or um, uh, view from the neighbors. So this is this is our project. Again, I'm I'm new to this. I have never really been part of a a, 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 a an evening like this. So I'm kind of a meeting like this. So it's it's all new, and I I hope I hope I'm clear. And I, I guess I I'm just hoping. You did that, very well. You, you did very well. Thank you so well. much. Good. You did very well. Okay. We understand that it is to build the, uh, an uncovered platform and you explained your application. So well done. Uh, does anyone have any questions of Mr. Andre at this time? Madam, um, to Madam Chair, sorry. Um, Mr. Anthony Bertolini just joined the meeting. So I promote him. I don't, I'm not sure if he wants to speak. Uh, he needs to unmute himself. Okay, very well. Mr. Andre, I think you uh, covered it quite well, but if you still want Mr. Bartolini to uh, speak on your behalf, you're welcome to do so. Absolutely. I would I would more than welcome him to join because he's obviously the one that designed. He is a, a contractor that is working with us. 
of all their members. Very well. Go um, ahead, Mr. Bartolini. Hi there. I'm so sorry. I was joined in on my phone, but I guess uh, it was the wrong number, so I had to uh, join through Zoom. Um, I don't have any further questions to uh, or comments to add to um, to the homeowner's uh, request there, Andre. Uh, but if there's any questions, I'm I'm open to answering on Andre's behalf as well. Thank you very much. Very well. Are there any questions of the applicant or his agents at this time? I see none. Very well. Uh, if no one else has called uh, with regard to this application, Madam Secretary Treasurer will take the matter into committee. There is no phone call at this time. Very well. And we do not have any letters of opposition or support on record. Uh, who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Tolowski. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I'd be happy to move that this application be approved as applied for, finding it meets the four tests of the Planning Act. I'd uh, note that there is no opposition to this application. This is largely a replacement of what had existed, which you can still get a nice view of on Google Globe View. Um, if you want to see the difference between the two. Um, and uh, based on the orientation of this lot and the variance being applied for, I'm satisfied that there'll be no impact. So again, I would move approval subject to the proposed uncovered platform being constructed in general accordance with the plan stated January 14th, 2023 and January 16th, 2023. And that the approval expire within two years of the building permit has not been issued. Thank you, Mr. Tarowski. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none, all those in support. Okay, the application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you very much, committee and Madam Chair. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Okay. Application CAV 206 of 2022 deferred from December the 13th of 2022 at 189 Weybourne Road. Again, this is CAV 206 of 2022 deferred from December the 13th of 2022 at 189 Weybourne Road. Mr. Romano, are you here for this application? Yes, good evening, Madam Chair. Franco Romano, 2095 Autumn Breeze, Port Credit, here on behalf of the owner. Very well, go ahead, sir. Thank you, and I appreciate the uh, committee's indulgence. So this is an application that is uh, a return application, so it was deferred back in uh, late last year. And the reason for the deferral was to uh, provide additional information and, and justification and work with planning staff as also, and also we uh, undertook some revisions. So the revisions that you will see resulted in a reduced building size. So the floor area has been reduced. Uh, there are three variances and I'll deal with them as I've shown them here on slide number one. Thank you staff for bringing that up. First variance is for the garage floor area of uh, 52.17 square meters. Still maintains a traditional conventional uh, integral garage to uh, two uh, garage doors facing the front. It's consistent with uh, particularly more recent construction, but also the varied mixture of construction along Weyborne and within the neighborhood. Uh, we accept and agree with staff that the intent of the bylaw is to ensure that the garage does not dominate the visually present of the, of the building and the proposal um, meets the general intent and purpose of the official plan and the zoning bylaw and is minor in nature. The second variance deals with floor area and uh, the floor area is in square meters uh, 22.83 square meters over two stories uh, over and above what the zoning bylaw permits. So the zoning bylaw permits 41% and the proposal is at 44.28%. The way that floor area is deployed on the property, it is a, a smaller lot coverage than the zoning bylaw permits. So it does not, uh, the building envelope is smaller than the footprint that would be allowed under the zoning bylaw. And then the, as the building rises from the ground, 
it's articulated. There are building step backs and setbacks. And if somehow this, I know on my screen, it's it's uh, blown up a little bit towards the site plan, but you'll see the two perspective drawings, the front and the rear perspective drawings and the uh, lower right and upper right of this slide. You'll see that there are uh, projections as well as step backs. Thank you kindly staff. So the building mass has been uh, reduced, particularly as it uh, projects towards the front and the, along the sides. And that's where on the site plan drawing, I've kind of I outlined in blue where the second story is. So how that matches up with the neighboring buildings to the right, there's a two story dwelling of more recent construction and to the left on this site plan is a, is a one story dwelling that uh, at some point will be redeveloped but in terms of the footprint and the building mass you'll see that it's very well positioned to neighboring properties with no unacceptable adverse impact my cover letter and staff also indicate that along Wayborne and even in the surrounding area floor areas and floor area ratios that are similar larger slightly smaller are, are commonplace, particularly for more recent construction. So it's very compatible with the condition that's occurring. And variance number three is for front yard setback. Uh, the zoning interpretation is taking the front yard setback to the front porch. So it's basically to a pinch point and you'll see that the front lot line runs on a bit of an angle. So the, the front lot line runs on an angle and the, the building itself is, is um, um, uh, not running parallel to that front lot line it's more square and that's why it's it's a pinch point and then it widens out but the main front wall of the building is um, actually more than zoning bylaw compliant for the front yard setback so it's more of a technical variance than anything else and you'll see how it lines up well with neighboring properties as, uh, in terms of front yard setback and the streetscape so I would submit as a registered professional planner and that planning staff's recommendations are appropriate, supportable, and that the three variances are minor in nature and result in no unacceptable adverse impact. Thank you for the opportunity and happy to answer any questions, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Romano. Are there any questions or items of clarification of Mr. Romano at this time? Okay, I see none. Has anyone called in with respect to this application, Madam Secretary Treasurer? There is no phone call at this time. Very well. Mr. Romano, I have to commend you. Um, uh, I see how compatible and um, sympathetic to the neighborhood the, the revisions have made this application. It's always very good to see when applicants hear and, and respond to the comments from staff to bring um, all the parties in alignment. So thank you for that. You're welcome, appreciate that. Uh, at this time, who would like to move a motion to for this application? Go ahead, Mr. Harcastle, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair. Um, having undertaken my site visit, having reviewed the materials, including the written staff report, having heard Mr. Romano's presentation, um, I am uh, satisfied that the requested variance is conformed to the four tests of the Act, and I'll put forward a motion of approval, uh, finding there will be no adverse impact associated with the variances. Um, uh, the motion should be subject to two conditions, those being that the two-story dwelling be uh, constructive in general accordance with the plans dated January 20th, 2023, and that the approval will expire within two years of the date of the decision if a permit has not been issued. I would note that there were no members of the public present with respect to this matter. Very well, thank you. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Your application has been approved. None opposed. Thank you, Mr. Romano. Thank you kindly. Enjoy your evening. Appreciate it. Have a good evening. Application CAV 145 of 2022 deferred from September the 13th of 2022 at 50 Stewart Street. Again, this is CAV 145 of 2022 deferred from September the 13th of 2022 at 50 Stewart Street.
who is the agent uh, for this application? I have Ms. Evangelista here listed. Um, Madam. Madam Chair, it's uh, Ms. Uh, Ida Evangelista. She's, she's speaking for this application. And I'm here. Very well. Go ahead, Ms. Evangelista, if you could be kind enough to turn your camera on. Yeah, this, there we are. Okay. Um, good evening, uh, Madam Chair, members. Ida Evangelista, on behalf of the owner of um, 50 Stewart. Uh, we were in front of the uh, panel uh, several months ago, and uh, we did defer the application. Planning had some concerns with the um, size of the project. So what we've done, uh, and uh, number 52 also had some concerns with the side yard setback. So uh, we did um, go back, we made some changes. We have um, now our, we are asking for a um, floor area ratio of 46.97 um, compared to the 51.09 that we had at our previous um, hearing. The other variance that we were asking for, and, and you'll note that the front yard setback, um, we are, our front yard set, setback is 5.77. However, if you refer to the site plan, you'll see that the 5.77 is taken from the bottom step. However, to, to the garage we have, there's articulation and, and various step backs at the front of the house. So we have on the south uh, portion uh, of the home, uh, the home does step back um, approximately 6.677 meters and on the north, uh, 7.53 meters and 8.577 um, meters. We do line up with the um, neighboring homes, uh, the way the, the home is plotted on the land. And the uh, one of the other concerns that uh, planning had was uh, the massing of the building. So if you refer to the, both the east and the west, you'll see that we do have various, we do have articulation in the uh, front of the home and also on the east and the west side of the home, there is articulation and step backs. Um, so it, does um, deter from the from the massing of the building. Uh, <clears throat> planning staff um, is in support of the application um, that is now um, set forth. Um, you know, the um, additional floor area is approximately about 18.84 square meters that we are asking for. Uh, we do not now, um, we do not have any uh, side yard setbacks. So both 52 and 46 are in support. Uh, I had previously sent in some letters of support and the letters of support for the neighboring properties was based on the, um, on the larger home. And uh, when the owners did speak to them uh, about the changes with this new home, and you'll see that we have no opposition this evening, uh, they are in full, full support of uh, what we are now proposing. I'm open for any questions that you may have. And in closing, uh, Madam Chair, I, I would just like to say that I do respectfully submit that the proposal that is in front of you um, is desirable and appropriate use of the subject lands and is minor in nature. And will have no, my, no, um, no adverse impacts on neighboring properties. Thank you, Ms. Evangelista. Are there any questions or items of clarification of Ms. Evangelista at this time? Okay, I see none. Madam Secretary Treasurer, has anyone called in with respect to this application? Um, there is no phone calls. Very well. We'll take the matter into committee. Who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Dickey. Just don't have the dates in front of me. So just when I when I read this, just <laughs> I think I have the dates. Just if I miss them. Um, uh, so anyway, based upon my review of the owner's application, application, the site plans, the building elevations, my site visit, together with the owner, the comments and information provided by the owner's agent, the uh, planning staff report, and the uh, fact that there's been no comments or negative or positive from the neighbors. Um, it's my opinion that the variance is minor and conforms to the test under the Planning Act. It would have no negative impacts 
on the neighbor. I put forth a motion and I recommend that the application as applied for be approved subject to the conditions that the house be built in accordance with the submitted plans and drawings dated, I believe, January 3rd, 2023, and that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Very well. Thank you, Mr. You did say January 31st, right? 2023. Oh, I didn't say that, but I said that's the correct one. Sorry. Yes, the elevation drawing is dated January 31st, 2023. Is, is that substantially in accordance to or in accordance to? Substantially in accordance to? Uh, it just says in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings dated January 31st, 2023, which is what our standard conditions usually read right. in general accordance with. So. If there's okay. anything off of those, you'll have to deal with it at build, building permit. Mm -hmm. uh, in general, in accordance, in general accordance to, yeah, that's pretty much the same as substantial. So that's that's good. That's okay. Sorry. All right. Uh, is there a discussion on this recommendation? I'm, is there a discussion on this recommendation? Okay. All of those in support. Your application has been approved, none opposed. My apologies, you were in committee, I should not have spoke. It's okay, um, I'd rather get the uh, clarification on the condition while we're, before we vote, but. Uh, um, I appreciate it. No have a good evening. Good evening. Okay, the last item on our agenda is application CAV is 047 of 2022, deferred from February the 22nd of 2023. Is that right? Hold on. Okay, so doesn't matter. It's uh, CAV 047 of 2022 at 135 Douglas Avenue. Again, it's CAV 047 at 135 Douglas Avenue. Hi, Ms. Medviva, we've got you again. Go ahead. Last time, I promise. Uh, all right, so for this application, the municipal address is 135 Douglas Avenue. If I could have the next slide, please. So to set the stage here, the property is located on the east side of Douglas Avenue. Again, it is located within an established residential neighborhood. The neighborhood can be described as having an eclectic character with a diverse range of historic and newer built forms. The owner of the property is seeking permission um, to construct a two-story replacement dwelling on the property. This proposal triggers three variances. If I could have the next slide, please. So just by way of context and background, this application was previously before the committee. It was deferred last at uh, Feb on February 22nd of 2023. Subsequently to the deferral, a revised proposal has been prepared and these are the variances that are triggered by this revised proposal. So for clarity, there are three variances that are to be, that are being sought. Uh, first variance is to permit an increased driveway width. To, second is to permit an increased building height, and third is to increase it to permit an increased lot coverage. If I could have the next slide, please. So overall, um, the proposed dwelling has been very sensitively located on the property. Just like to highlight, the property itself does have unique site characteristics, in that the elevations significantly change between the Douglas Avenue frontage and what would be the rear yard. Um, so there's quite a dip, and I'll explain this a little bit further in a second. So again, just to highlight from the variances themselves, the driveway width variance um, requesting a driveway width of 11 meters is measured from the widest point of the driveway in the rear yard. 
so on screen, you can see the dimension um, in between the, what would be new trees. There's the 11 meter width measured at that point. That width is required to make sure that there's an appropriate maneuvering space, um, but also to provide appropriate traffic patterns on the property and along Douglas Avenue. Overall, there's additional landscaping that will be provided. So there will be additional landscaping on the perimeter of the driveway and along the neighboring property lines. I do have a slide that will show that a little bit better in a moment. Um, but this additional landscaping provides for mitigation of privacy and overlook concerns, as well as any perception of lighting protruding into the adjacent yards. Um, secondly, just to highlight, in terms of the requested building height variance, so building height is typically measured from established grade to the top of the peak of the roof. As I mentioned earlier, this lot does have a sloping topography. So the established grade is a little bit lower and this contributes to the requested building height. Also like to highlight that the requested building height is in line with dwellings that are along Douglas Avenue. And in particular, the two, sorry, the two dwellings that are immediately to the south. This is further demonstrated in the landscape plan that was circulated with the application. And lastly, in terms of the requested lot coverage, the revised proposal has been, there's a number of articulations that are provided along the front and side elevations. So careful consideration has been given to try and visually reduce the appearance of mass and scale, but also to provide a built form that respects the character of the subject lands as well as the surrounding neighborhood. So overall, a guiding principle of the design has been to provide a built form and built form features that preserve the established character of the subject lands and surrounding neighborhoods. If I could have the next slide. This is an image of the proposed front elevation. So again, there are articulations. Livable space has been integrated into the roof line. So again, these contribute to respecting the neighborhood character, but also visually reducing the appearance of mass and scale. If I could have the next slide. This is an image of the proposed rear elevation. So we have reviewed the staff report and I'd just like to pause here for a moment. One variation um, between the elevations that were reviewed as part of the applications committee versus the plans that were that we collaboratively discussed with planning staff. There is an outdoor fireplace within the rear covered porch that is essentially shifted from the north property line to the south property line. And that's in response to planning staff um, consideration. That was an ask that was made of us and we fully complied. It has no impact on the requested variances. It's really an aesthetic feature, but it also serves to prevent uh, privacy and overlook concerns, particularly for the Southern property. If I could have the next slide, please. These are the side elevations. So again, these elevations are the ones that were circulated and discussed with planning staff. So the image on your bottom left shows the outdoor fireplace along the Southern property line. That is the only change between the elevations that are before the committee versus what was discussed with planning staff and is identified in the planning staff report. If I could have the next slide. So just to conclude, we understand um, that there was some privacy and overlook concerns. The owner is more than willing to provide additional landscaping. So there is a preliminary landscape plan that has been prepared and we are fully intending to provide a formal landscape plan as part of the application. As outlined in my submission letter, it is my opinion that the application meets the four tests of the Planning Act. I'm happy to answer any questions that there may be. Thank you, Ms. Maziva. Are there any questions or items of clarification of Ms. Maziva at this time? Okay, I see none. Has anyone called in with respect to this application? Um, there, is, Secretary Treasurer. there is no phone calls to this time. Very well. We do have a letter of support on hand from uh, Mr. Richard and W. June Herring Hetherington. Who would like to move a motion? 
Go ahead, Monsieur. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I have. I have read and reviewed the application materials, including the drawings the site, uh, and uh, the staff reports, as well as the le support letter uh, based on, and I have finished the uh, site visit. And uh, as such, I am satisfied that this proposal meets uh, for, act, for test and act. As such, I'd like to move the motion forward to approve this uh, proposal subject to uh, three conditions that the dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the submitted site plan, landscape plan, and the elevation drawings reviewed by planning staff on April 21st, 2023. Number two, the, that the director of planning review and sign off on the landscape plan. And the, 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 proposed, uh, the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Thank you. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support. The application has been approved. None opposed. Have a good evening, Ms. McViva. You too. Thank you very much. Madam Secretary Treasurer, you'll let us know when the uh, Oh, no, I've jumped way <laughs> past. Um, we have confirmation of minutes for May 3rd. Mr. Hardcastle, thank you for moving the minutes. And now motion to adjourn. Mr. Hardcastle, thank you. We have adjourned at 9.18 PM. Madam Secretary Treasurer, please let us know when we are offline. <laughs>